Hi, and thanks for coming to my channel. This is Midnight Moon Tarot, and I'm Diana. This reading is for the astrological sign of Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Jupiter, or anywhere in your birth chart that Pisces might appear. Also, if you're new to my channel, I'd like to take just a second and invite you to subscribe and click that little bell so that you're sure to be notified whenever I upload new content. Also, in the description box below, you'll find links to my social media, my Patreon, my PayPal, and links to some really cool things on Amazon I think you guys will like. Okay, so this reading is for May 21st through 31st, 2020, keeping in mind that all tarot readings are timeless. So whether you come across this reading right after I upload, a week, month, or even a year from now, if you feel drawn to watch it, most likely you will find a message for you within the reading. And if it doesn't completely resonate with you, just keep the parts that do and disregard the rest. And remember that this is just a generalized reading for the entire sun sign of Pisces. This is why it's important to know your other planetary placements like I mentioned at the beginning of this video so that you can listen to your other signs as well for additional messages. Okay so with all that being said let's go ahead and calibrate these cards to the astrological sign of Pisces and ask our angels, guides, and ancestors for any love messages for Pisces. May 21st through 31st, 2020. Spirit, what love messages do you have for Pisces for May 21st through 31st? Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. Spirit, what love messages do you have for Pisces? All right, now I'm going to go ahead and divide these into three stacks. Okay, and the card on the bottom of the deck <clears throat> is the Two of Pentacles. Now, the Two of Pentacles is going to be the overall energy for this reading. So, the Two of Pentacles talks about, well, we're going to go ahead and just explain the card. You see all this water that is so turbulent in the back. This is representing the your part. Pisces, you may be involved with or have someone that is an earth sign that is in your life that seems to be uh, upsetting you quite a bit, that you are not receiving the nurturing that you need. You may not be um, receiving the sensitivity or the emotional care that you need from this partner. They are somebody who is, they're sitting there so completely self-involved, playing around, goofing off, uh, forever self-involved with their their own little needs and what's going on to their mind, completely oblivious to this turbulent emotional storm that you are feeling. You can see these little ships in the back being tossed around and they don't even know if they're going to survive, if their ship's going to sink. They don't know if they're about to die. And the, the whole time this little guy's got his back turned and completely ignoring what is going on around them. And the partner that you may be involved with may be representative of this. You may be involved with somebody who just doesn't seem to care or even bother to pay attention. <clears throat> However, that can sometimes only be just an illusion. Sometimes they have so much going on within themselves that is the reason that they are not paying attention to what you are going on. So sometimes it can mean that you are being overly sensitive as well as maybe selfish and unaware of what they are going through as well. It's like a, a weird little balance here, just like he's juggling these two coins here. But as we go through the reading, we're going to find out a little bit more and why that card is so important. Now, for those of you who are new here, I do four rows. And the first row represents you, uh, what you may have recently gone through, things that are coming towards you and options and people that uh, are will be entering your life. Okay. The second column is the same thing, only it's for your beloved, your intended, twin flame, soulmate, karmic partner. This could be an ex that you would like to reconcile with. Um, it could very well be somebody that you've just met, but generally it is the person that you think about the most. The one you think of in the morning when you first wake up, and the last person you're thinking about when you go to sleep at night. The third column is about blockages, challenges, uh, things that are keeping us from achieving our goals. It's also our fears and anxieties, okay? Things that aren't necessarily real, but things that we are worried about happening that may not actually be happening or ever happen. It's just 
you know, has to do with that type thing. Okay, and the last column is your outcome, okay? So I'm going to lay down an extra card here because that one fell out. All right, so we're going to go ahead with this beginning, and we have the chariot as well as the king of pentacles. So you could have an earth sign coming into your life. This would be Capricorn, Taurus, or Virgo person that is, you know, offering you that stability, that financial security, um, someone who is artistic and loving, uh, someone who is uh, sensual, uh, and at the same time, uh, you may feel like this is something that you are really interested in making happen, but it's not going as fast as you'd like, even though this is the chariot. If you look, you'll see that these little sphinxes are actually sitting down. It's like when you get in the car and you turn the key and your car doesn't start and you really got to go right, right now. There's like delays or things that are keeping you from moving forward, uh, even though you really want to. This could be some of your fears and anxieties that are holding you back, or it could be uh, things like your partner not being ready, okay, even though they may say they are. Okay, so when we get to your partner's column, we have the Five of Pentacles as well as the Six of Pentacles. This tells me that, uh, it, you know, it's feeling to you like a somewhat of an unbalanced relationship. Remember when we were talking about this person may not be giving you that sensitivity and that emotional support that you need. This is representative of you giving and giving and giving and it being like you are the only one in the relationship that is doing all the work and the other person just takes and takes takes and it leaves you in a position where you know uh you you are in this reward uh and uh, what's the other word like when they don't want anything to do with you and then they give you attention that type that type of cycle so when you are separated from this you feel homeless as if that person is actually your home when you are with this person you feel like you are coming home to that person and it's leaving you feeling homeless and broken just a little bit you may have had a, a lot of hurt in your life that um, previous to this that is leading you to feel uh, that you actually need this extra nurturing and caring that you that you actually require in order to function in a relationship Pisces is one of the most uh, sensitive and emotional of all the signs and uh, truly, you do need someone that is basically an earth sign that can uh, help you to be more grounded and more loving. So where you feel like, you know, you would love to be this queen of pentacles, you are willing to and have been working on yourself and growing your little garden and focusing on uh, what it is you want from the future and enjoying the fruits of your labor. Uh, this is like when you plant a little garden and you check on it all the time to make sure that it's growing properly. It's not quite ready to come to harvest, but you feel as if, you know, this is a relationship that you want, but it's not quite to the level that you need it to be at the time. Now, you have to be careful with your blockages and your fears and anxieties because when you dwell on those a lot, uh, it makes you actually manifest those things in your life. That can actually be your blockages is worrying that that is never going to happen, that it's not moving as fast as you want. So the more that you think that, the more that that's actually going to happen in your life. You actually have to learn to let go of some of those fears and anxieties. So before you may have been really, this is your outcome, so you you may have really been feeling betrayed, stabbed in the back, as if, you know, we have this red robe here. It's indicative of, like, all of his life force and blood coming out of him. It really tore you apart. It really, really hurt you. And when you have the Seven of Cups, <coughs> you know, in a lot of decks, you see that these are all, this look like treasures here, like it's other options. But in most uh, decks. It's indicative of there are so many uh, options and there's so much uh, murkiness that there's so much overindulgence that it all just becomes this little really gross uh, cesspool that you were in and you really don't want to be a part of that anymore and that is part of what uh, led you to your destruction. Your partner could have had more than 
you going on more than one option and this is something that you weren't uh, ready and willing to deal with and it just left you in a complete state of uh, feeling like this person just absolutely did not care about what your feelings were. Now I just laid out those four rows with two cards in each row. I'm going to do that two more times for a grand total of 24 cards which will give us a pretty good idea about what's going on these last 10 days of May. So in your uh, column again we have the Two of Wands as well as the Knight of Pentacles. In the Partners column we have that Nine of Swords as well as the Seven of Wands. In your Obstacles, Challenges, Fears, Anxieties, Blockages we have the Hanged Man as well as the Five of Wands. And in your Outcome we have that Queen of Cups and the Ace of Cups. Okay, so it looks like, you know, there's going to be a little bit of trouble, but, you know, things may work out pretty good. So this um, Knight of Pentacles tells me that, you know, this is something that's going to be slow and steady. This relationship may not move as fast as you like, but it is moving. There is forward growth, and it leaves you where you can actually look forward to the future and plan uh, what it is you want. He's holding this globe in his hand like it's a crystal ball staring out between these two wands which are the twos are always about decisions and deciding what it is he wants from his future. Now with your knight, which is your partner that is approaching you, uh, it gives you that little bit of security. You know, like I said, we have this guy here, this is also a two, and here you have these twos. And you know, it's about decisions. It's about that balance. It's about deciding whether you want that type of relationship. Are you willing to calm down just a little bit and let these things flow naturally? Or are you going to be so overly emotional that you can actually uh, break down the communication between you and your partner? Uh, this too tells me this is the beginning of this relationship where your partner is actually coming into balance and that they are willing to uh, have this growth with you. It might not be on your terms or move as fast as you want, but that King of Pentacles is coming and it does offer you that stability that you want and you crave and you need in your life. Now your partner has the Nine of Swords as well as the Seven of Wands, so they could could have at one time had a lot of really bad hurt going on in their life that has caused them to be a little more cautious, to be a little more defensive, to uh, feel as if, you know, they're always having to explain themselves as far as the reasons why they aren't moving as quickly as you would like them to. So when we get to this uh, next column, your obstacles and challenges, we have that hanged man and the seven of wands. So again, you're feeling feeling like, you know, you're stagnant. It's not moving as fast as you want. You want it to hurry up. And, you know, this can cause you to end up feeling, uh, you know, like you're going to have these little petty arguments. Now, this is not the Five of Swords. It's the Five of Wands. So this is, tells me, you know, it's like a little unnecessary picking or fussing or nagging uh, at your partner, which can, you know, delay your forward movement with this person. You know, just learn to relax and enjoy the things that are coming into your atmosphere because whatever you put out there into the universe, it comes back to you. You put out lots of love, you're going to get lots of love. If you put a lot of insecurities out there, that is what you are going to receive back. It's all about that law of attraction and uh Deciding exactly what it is you want and what you want. This is your outcome. You have this Queen of Cups as well as this Ace of Cups. And so you are a very loving, compassionate, emotional, sensual person who provides uh, a lot of comfort, uh, a lot of nurturing. And this is the type of love that you want. You want a love that is so full that it overflows into all aspects of your life. So as long as you are putting this out there into the universe, then it's exactly what you're going to attract back, which is really sometimes hard when we've been hurt, ridiculously hurt in our past. Okay, now the card that fell out with that was the uh, Six of Wands, which tells me that as long as you keep doing that, you're going to be successful. See how he's riding around on his horse and he has that little laurel on his wands there and he's 
he's uh, bragging and showing off that you know he's won the won the battle. All right, so when we get to this last set of four rows, we have that King of Cups and we have the Two of Swords. And your partner has the Four of Cups and that Three of Wands. Okay. In your fears and anxieties, obstacles, challenges, blockages, we have the Death card as well as the Eight of Cups. Okay. And in your outcome, we have the Eight of Wands and the devil, and I'll be drawing a couple of extra little cards just for clarifiers here. Usually 24 is enough, sometimes it's not. Sometimes spirit has a little more to say. So again, twos are all about um, calling those truces. It's about making decisions. It's about uh, being blind to what your feelings actually are and basing it on the facts. Okay. It's like the peace sign. It's like you have this clash, but you're calling a truce. You want to be on this balanced, equal terms with your partner. You want to view this person as the king of cups to your queen of cups. Somebody that is strong and stable, but also sensitive and emotional and sensual. So you're going to have to find, you're going to have to find that balance and decide if you're going to be able to maintain that because as long as you aren't and you do have these insecurities that are going on with you, uh, you're going to keep attracting people who are going to trigger uh, insecurities and jealousies and things like that in your life. So be careful about what it is that you do put out there to your universe. So the way that you're seeing your partner is you're now waiting for your ships to come in, but you don't uh, you don't want to be bored. You don't want to. See how he's sitting there and he's just not having it? Uh, if it's not moving fast enough for you, uh, you're kind of bored. And at the same time, your partner with all of the moodiness and things like that, that can sometimes go along with being a Pisces just day to day. Your moods can change. You can be all upset and 20 minutes later, you're over it. Okay. We're a lot like that in my family, but uh, people sometimes don't like dealing with that, with all that emotional uh, ups and downs, you know, kind of like that. Um, where was that? Like that ship and that two of, where did it go? I don't remember where I put it, but it's, yeah, it, here it is. The card from the beginning where you have all these waves and emotions going on back here okay just uh, be cautious that you don't let your emotions and your fears get uh, a, a foothold in your relationship because that can lead you to continue to attract those same things in your life that you have been through before and you don't want those things in your life anymore. So you've got to release those things. You had that 10 of swords earlier and that, you know, 10s are about ends of cycles. And when you get to that point, this is time for it to be over, okay? You're through with that stagnation as you got with the hanged man. And you are ready for this relationship to move forward. You are being being cautious that you do not want to attract another codependent relationship or someone that uh, likes to, uh, I call them a manipulation ship, where if you have somebody that triggers those codependent tendencies that all of us have, but especially Pisces will tend to be in a relationship where they try to please and please and please just in order to have uh, those good times with that person that you can find yourself willing to put up with drugs and alcohol and, uh, you know, like I said, just codependent narcissistic type tendencies that you will get from this person. Okay. So as long as you are not overly emotional and you don't jump to conclusions with things, uh, you won't attract this person back into your life anymore. So I said I would draw a couple more cards. So I'm just going to reach in randomly and pull out a card. And we have the lovers. So how wonderful. So the lovers, if you look at these two cards here, you have the same two lovers. And this one is more balanced and it's blessed by the angel. And we have this one where it's like toxic and codependent and it's kind of ruled by the devil and those, uh, all those gross 
toxic energies that are not good for anyone. So, uh, you know, you're able to, if you can, like I said, uh, get past those um, feelings of uh, jealousy, codependency, that type of thing, and find yourself in a relationship that is more balanced. Now, I know that you are a water sign, but you may very well have a lot of uh air in you or a lot of Libra in your chart. We have, this is about balance and we have this uh, two of swords, which is new moon in Libra. So you're having a lot of uh, signs like that show up as well that tell me that you may have a lot of Libra placement in your chart. Now I'm going to go ahead and just pull one more randomly out of here and we've got the Ten of Cups. So I do see that you will have this happily ever after. This new person coming into your life is a very good match for you. This is somebody that uh, can make you um, inspired to continue to have your growth. Uh, you know, we can be with people that drag us down and bring us down, or we can be with people that uplift us and that make us want to be better people just by being with them. So Pisces, that is your reading for May 21st through the 31st, and I hope you guys enjoyed that. And if you go to my page and look on the community tab, I'm doing a little giveaway uh, It to show my thanks and gratitude for all you guys, for all of your likes, comments, shares, subscribes, and um, all of you who have very generously donated to my channel. Thank you guys so much. If you will go to that um, post in the community tab, I, like I said, I'm doing a giveaway. Just like the post and underneath it in the comment section, just write done. And then I can include you in the drawing, which will be May 31st. And whoever wins, I will send you a, a, an email and notify you. And I'll also post the winner on uh, my page as well in the community tab. All right, guys. I love you. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.